Hello and welcome to another episode of PokeMath. My name is Stefan Eriksson and in today's episode, which is number, well, how far are we now? 63, we're going to be talking about Epic Splash. And I'm going to get straight into it. It is a very fun format and very different from regular standard and any other format you may know, which, as you can see, involves some different cards. So let's explain more about it, shall we? Now, first and foremost, what is it? It is indeed easy to understand and hard to master. You may think, hard to master, what can this all be about? Well, you have to have some good skills flipping a lot of coins, otherwise you will not succeed in this um, very coin flip based format. But that's what makes it fun, among a lot of other things. Let's just uh, get to it. So, fun format revolving around Magikarp with Epic Splash, hence the name the Epic Splash format. Actually, there exist about six different Magikarps, Prince, Stamps, whatnot, with the attack Epic Splash. So four different ones, but a couple of extras, like a Generations a version, a Stamp, Toys R Us, and who knows. But the whole format is just Magikarp. These are, in fact, the only basic Pokemon you'll be playing in your deck. But more about that a little later. Now, both players in the initial idea of the format, would play the same 60 cards. So basically you're playing, yeah, a 60 card game mirror, which means that you know exactly, if you remember the deck list at least, what your opponent would be playing, which also makes this really, really fun. And of course, it involves a lot of coin flips and an alternative win condition. Some people may know it from Yu-Gi-Oh, but for those who don't know it, Exodia Forbidden One, if you have all five pieces of Exodia, you instantly win the game. That is something that makes Epic Splash stand out from a lot of, a lot of different formats, or a lot of other formats, which makes this incredibly fun to include such a win condition. Before we get into the actual rules and everything, let's look at Epic Splash history, because where does this even come from? And uh, actually, it's been quite in development for quite a long time, and to start somewhere, once upon a time there was a splash, and it was epic. Now, people have seen all the memes, people know a lot about Magikarp, but do they know about Epic Splash? I doubt. The first take of the format, we should go back and credit the Dark Integral Gaming, so thank you for that one, Donald. He was playing against Yellow Swallow, where they played a very coin flip based format, or two decks against each other, I believe also a 60 card mirror. And well, ever since then, which was back in 2017, I believe, March 10th or so, but correct me if I'm wrong, I will put the link to the video in the description below so people can go and see where this all originates from. And of course, after all this here, it was further developed by a group of dice throwing fish trainers in Odense, Denmark, which includes way too many people for me to credit here, but I would like to do my best and put them also in the description below so they get their proper shout out for this, because thank you so much, wouldn't be able to do this without you guys. Because of your enthusiasm, they developed a format which then, starting from Donald's uh, deck in, uh, in his video against Yellow Swallow, it went over to more Magikarp Epic Splash. And as they developed, they started also including older cards. So not just standard or expanded, but even older cards, which makes this much more fun and intensifies the dice throwing aspect of this entire format. So what actually further happened from there? Well, there's a lot of things that actually went on still. And even to the point that in Denmark, we held a national championship or an epic splash tournament from which the winner will be the unofficial national champion. And that trophy would actually wander around quite a bit because a lot of people wanted a taste of that golden fish. So I don't even remember if I ever won. It's definitely fun to play. I did participate in more than one of these, but what is really fun about this trophy, let's zoom in a little bit on this here. And I also credit here for, for people to hand me over this photo here, because do you even splash, bro? That is basically how this, <laughs> this trophy came to be. Rumor has it now, so it's been moving around a lot from all the winners, but rumor has it now that Christian Fundenot has it, know who you are, and hopefully the trophy would appear again. So we once again, with the original trophy, can actually host a national championship. Otherwise, we just need to make a new trophy, but uh, that uh, requires work, right? And ever since then, the splashing still intensifies. Ever since, there's still been tournaments held around as ladies in Copenhagen this year. And as of uh, late, my brother Jesper brought uh, two copies of the deck to the World Championship and starting also really promote this format. And that's also what this video is all about at the end of the day. Now, with the history out of the way, let's get into what are the exact rules of this game. 
So this fun format comes with additional rule. I would say you play with all the standard rules and that is generally correct, but it comes a lot of extras. You can first of all win by Exodia. So at any point in the game, if you have all five uh, pieces in your hand, slam it down and win the game, blow your opponent off the board. And they will hopefully scream, it's impossible or something like that. Now, a few more additions. When you attack with Epic Splash, you must roll two six-sided dice at the same time. Like, don't go one coin flip, two coin flips, or one die, two die, no. It's very important you do this with two dice at the same time. Also mostly for time-saving purposes, but also because there is a special rule if you roll snake eyes. Some others will say it's a one and two, it used to be that, but snake eyes is, after some modification, maybe a better choice, but you can actually just choose which roll you would have to make in order to activate the effect of searching your deck for a piece of Exodia. That's a nice little bonus. And when playing Rescue Stretcher, if it's in the list, it also receives an errata. That is that it gets actually an additional option in this case here, where you can choose one piece of Exodia and shuffle into your deck. Otherwise, the card will be too good. Because remember, fifth and final here, Exodia is not a Pokemon. That means all the cards that search a Pokemon cards or Pokemon can not search Exodia. Because as you may know, it's not a Pokemon. So those are the different rules here. Otherwise, standard rules apply. You win by drawing all your prize cards, you win by deck out, you win by benching out, or you win by Exodia in this case. Those are the actual rules of the game. So let's look at an example list from now. So as of late, actually not that many days ago from this video here, Jesper published here. I know Slowpoke, you, it's Jesper's, but we have to get over with it. He's the one who actually published this here. I'm also, for the benefit of everyone here, added in the link below a printable list of an Epic Splash deck. Not exactly the same here, but it does include some of the infamous cards in the deck, which is sized or scaled to size, so you can actually print and play. Now, it's a little difficult to look at this here, so let's zoom in a little bit and look at some of the example cards here. Yes, my picture's hovering over Exodia, but your imagination can make it there. And you will see a healthy mix of older and newer cards. Even things from Chaos Gym for those who want to look at that card. That is one tricky... Uh, yeah, that's really difficult. And we also see we introduced the Magic Card Break, which is one of the special cards specially developed in this format. And one fun thing about Magic Card Break, it has 40 hit points instead of 30 and... Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. And we play Lima, Professor Birch, Handiwork. There's some uh, delinquents in there to really make this uh, skill-based, let's call it that. But also a lot of other fun additions, some interactions with Among Us. If you go and read that one, even you have a theoretical possibility with this list to get Slow King in play from one of the Neo sets. However, it's up to you to figure out how likely that is when you play one Slow King and one Dream Ball and nothing else that can help you. So the point in all this, it's gonna be super random. And a lot of things are just so much fun when you play this game because you never really know where this is going. So what you will notice about all these, besides being a lot of coin flip cards, which of course is all the fun of this here, something you may think, huh, coin flips is interesting and how does that actually go? Well, in Pokemath episode 21, me and Sean went in and looked at Pichot's flipping algorithm and we used a variant of the Epic Splash deck. Of course, we couldn't play the break because it doesn't exist, but we played four magic cards for Epic Splash and so forth. So you can also go and see how that went. There exist many different versions of this. I even have my own copy of the deck laying around here as well. It's a great and fun format to play. So take a while, pause the video if you must, go and check out the cards and otherwise check the printable list as well or Jesper's post or any other thing for that matter that will help you get introduced to this format. It is definitely a lot of fun. And about introducing this format and making it more available, there's actually currently being developed a new version of Epic Splash, which will be a legal side event format. So hopefully me and another team, uh, including Jesper and also Svensson, we call him, good old Svensson, one of the main developers of this as well. So a big shout out to him. We are currently developing an adapted version, which will be legal for side event formats. And you may think, why is the list not legal as it is? Well, there's some rules and things we must abide to. So we cannot use any, say, cards that are not legal in Pokemon. So we can't use Exodia or the Magic Card Break. So we need to actually come around with some workarounds while still maintaining the spirit of the format. So one of the updates we're looking into is how do we deal with Magic Card Break? And one of the solutions we are looking into now is use the same as the Ditto Counter known from Pick a Pack Evolved, I believe it is, or some of the other side events, where you can use a counter to basically put in the magic card break and do it once per game and then you can play you can print this one and actually use that as your counter instead which still makes you able to play it and the 
benefit of this is it doesn't take up a space in your deck, so you get a space for one more flip card. I see that as a win. So that's one thing we had to look into. How do we deal with Exodia? Well, we found a way to also get around this by using evolutions. So that means, for instance, uh, you can pick and choose between five different evolutions ever printed. The only point is they must be stage one, cannot be any basic Vs, for instance, or EX, older, if that was still actually a thing at that point. But in any case, Vs are basics. They must be stage ones because the card list around also evolves them about not being basic. That also means some other things has to be updated because instead of being a not Pokemon, like Exodia, now they're Pokemon. But also, we can also have a lot of evolutions in the deck and you can pick which five you want yourself. Just has to be five different ones. So that's quite a lot of fun. I think that actually makes it much more fun to build and a lot more flexible. And then what about the legal card list? So here's some examples, some very good Epic Splash cards. But the way we're gonna do it here now, instead of having a standard 60 card deck everybody must build because there could be some, say, cost restrictions, even though this format is incredibly cheap. It could be that because a lot of people want it all at the same time, it gets expensive. So we were facing a choice. Do we want to make a ban list or flip it around and make a legal card list? Because that list is going to be a lot shorter. So me and the team, we've been looking through the past weeks, scouring ever since base set all the way up until wherever we are right now and looking for valid epic splash cards. And those choices are difficult to be honest, because uh, let me give you an example, a card like Pokeball was seen as too good for this format, then you can see what we're working with. We really want to emphasize silly cards, coin flip based cards, and thing that doesn't promote, uh, you must play this in order to win or something like that. We want to have this format open and fun for everyone. Yeah, I hope this is going to be accessible. It's going to be definitely be a lot of fun. And uh, in any case, having also evolutions make people have any choice to include their favorite Sylveon, Espeon, Umbreon, Flareon, who knows, whatever you want. And I hope, that you also, by this video, have been a little more intrigued about Epic Splash, and hopefully you also give this format a try sometime in the future. And maybe, who knows, it will be seen as an official side event sooner than you think. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video here, because that was all for today in Stefan's Classroom, and I hope to see you back for another class in Stefan's Classroom. Have a good day. Bye.